Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 26th of March. Total COVID-19 cases reach 649 in India amid lockdown, 13 dead. Prisoner released by Afghan government to start by March end, says Taliban. And Sri Lanka updates curfew time amid COVID-19 spread. And now for all the details. Indians practice social distancing on Thursday as they stepped out amid the ongoing lockdown to buy essential items. India began its three-week lockdown on Wednesday to stem the deadly coronavirus. So far, the country has reported over 640 positive cases and 13 deaths. The total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in India rose to 649, including 593 active cases and 42 people who have been cured or discharged from hospitals as authorities prepare to fight the coronavirus pandemic. The death toll due to the novel coronavirus in the country reached 13 on Thursday, with Srinagar city in India's Jammu and Kashmir reporting its first COVID-19 death. Meanwhile, on the second day of the nationwide lockdown on Thursday, Indians practiced social distancing as they stepped out to buy essential items. While customers stood in circles made on ground outside fruits and vegetables shop in India's northern Noida city, devotees were seen doing the same in northern Lucknow city outside temples to protect themselves from the virus. Similar scenes were also witnessed in other parts of the country. <laughs> For those breaking the lockdown rules, police resorted to punishing the offenders like sit-ups and push-ups. Police across the country have barricaded roads and are stopping vehicles to restrict people's movement, exempting only those providing essential services. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi ordered everyone indoors for the next three weeks, saying it was the only way to avoid a disaster, but effectively shutting down Asia's third largest economy. Moving on, Pakistan's confirmed cases of novel coronavirus rose to over 1,000 on Thursday after new cases were reported in Balochistan region and Sindh province. With more than 400 COVID-19 cases, Sindh remained the worst state province in the country. The number of novel coronavirus cases in Pakistan rose to over 1,000 on Thursday after new cases were reported in Balochistan region and Sindh province. According to the Pakistan government, out of the total, more than 400 COVID-19 cases have been reported from Sindh only, making it the worst hit region in the country. Despite rising number of coronavirus cases in the country, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan earlier refused to impose a countrywide lockdown, saying it will affect the poor. He instead urged people to self-quarantine themselves to fight the pandemic. Pakistan has so far suspended all domestic flights from March 26 to contain the spread of the virus in the country. Several provincial governments have imposed lockdown and strict measures to contain the spread of COVID-19. Meanwhile, as an effort to promote personal preventive measures to take during the COVID-19 outbreak, police of a small Punjabi town also released a catchy video. The clip shows a young policeman in uniform acting out various correct and incorrect scenarios such as sneezing, shaking hands and touching banisters set to a sing-song background music. In news from Afghanistan, the Afghan government has said it would free 100 Taliban detainees on humanitarian grounds at the end of March, raising uncertainty about the fate of prisoner release deal with the insurgents who have demanded that 5,000 detainees be freed. The Afghan government said on Wednesday that it would free 100 Taliban detainees on humanitarian grounds at the end of March. 
However, this has raised uncertainty about the fate of a prisoner release deal with the insurgents who have demanded that 5,000 detainees be freed. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani government's National Security Council spokesperson Javid Faisal took to Twitter and said, subject to further discussions, 100 prisoners would be freed on humanitarian grounds. This number is far less than 1,500 prisoners that Ghani recently agreed to release. Earlier on Wednesday, a Taliban spokesman Suhail Shahin said in a tweet that the sites had agreed that the release of prisoners will practically start by the end of March. The prisoner impasse has threatened to derail a carefully negotiated peace process outlined in the U.S.-Taliban agreement signed in Doha on February 29, including a pullout of foreign forces from Afghanistan after over 18 years of fighting. Meanwhile, in the latest, Ghani has finalized a list of 20 representatives to negotiate with the Taliban, an important step towards the much-awaited intra-Afghan talks. While the world is fighting a battle for survival against the dreaded COVID-19, which has claimed thousands of lives, militant groups in Afghanistan continue to spread hate. The Islamic State on Wednesday mounted a vicious attack in Kabul, which left at least 27 people dead. 27 people were killed and more than 8 others were wounded during an attack on a Sikh place of worship in the Shore Bazaar area of Afghan capital Kabul on Wednesday. The Islamic State militant group claimed the responsibility for the attack. Hours after the attack began, Interior Ministry spokesman Tariq Aryan said an operation by the security forces was over and all attackers had been killed. Sikhs have been targeted by Islamic militants in South Asia before and in Afghanistan. Their community numbers fewer than 300 families. Apart from Afghan leaders, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo also condemned the Kabul attack, saying the Afghan people deserve a future free of Islamic State and other terrorist activity. The latest attack was carried out a day after the U.S. cut $1 billion aid to Afghanistan over frustration that feuding political leaders could not reach agreement and form a team to negotiate with the Taliban. Wednesday's violence was the second big attack against Sikh minority group claimed by the Islamic State in this month. Moving on, Bangladesh on Thursday observed its 50th Independence Day amid shutdown. This year, the government cancelled all programs of the day as the country is fighting to contain the transmission of novel coronavirus. Bangladesh announced a stimulus package of $588 million to help export-oriented industries revive economic impact of COVID-19 in home and abroad. Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Wednesday unveiled a $588 million package for the country's crucial export sector that has been hit by the outbreak of coronavirus. Hasina made the announcement in a televised speech to the nation on Wednesday night on the eve of the country's Independence Day. The emergency measures have been taken to support the export-oriented industries. She said, this fund can be used for paying wages and allowances to the ready-made garment workers and employees. During the address, Prime Minister Hasina informed that Central Bank of Bangladesh would take business-friendly initiatives so that no one is considered a loan defaulter till June. Meanwhile, Bangladesh has declared a 10-day shutdown effective from March 26 to April 4 to battle the spread of the coronavirus. Both private and public sectors, except emergency services, would come to a temporary halt. Bangladesh on Wednesday announced the country's fifth death related to COVID-19. The victim was one of the 39 cases reported in the country to date. In East from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka updated its schedule for the lifting and reimposition of the curfew currently in effect across the island nation to combat the outbreak of coronavirus pandemic. The island nation so far confirmed over 100 coronavirus cases with zero death. 
Sri Lanka has updated its schedule for the lifting and reposition of curfew currently in effect across the island nation to combat the outbreak of coronavirus pandemic. The curfew currently in force in Colombo, Gamfa and Kalutara districts which were identified as the high risk zones will continue until further notice. The curfew currently in force in Puttalam, Vavunia, Mannar, Kilinochi, Mulatavu, Jaffna districts will be lifted at 6 am on March 27. and will be reimposed at 2 pm on the same day the curfew in the districts will be lifted again at 6 am on march 30 and will be reimposed at 2 pm on the same day the government has made every arrangement to ensure that the public can buy essential commodities and other items from home during the curfew meanwhile sri lankan president gotabaya rajapaksha has requested international donor agencies to provide a debt moratorium or debt deferment facility to all vulnerable developing nations to the covid-19 risk gotabaya has urged the world health organization to forward his request to multilateral and bilateral lending agencies president rajapaksha has pointed out this relief would be helpful to manage covid-19 social distancing public health and social security systems in those countries President Rajapaksha has pointed out this relief would be helpful to manage COVID-19 social distancing, public health and social security systems in those countries. Sri Lanka has so far confirmed over 100 coronavirus cases with zero death. In order to protect the poor from the economic impact of the 21-day nationwide lockdown, Indian government on Thursday announced a 22.6 billion dollar economic stimulus plan. India's finance minister said the relief package includes direct benefit cash transfer for the poor while the middle class would be able to withdraw funds from their employees provident fund account. India on Thursday announced a 22.6 billion dollar economic stimulus plan to provide relief to scores of poor hit by the nationwide lockdown in the country. The economic stimulus plan will be released through direct cash transfers and food security measures said Indian finance minister Nirmala Sitharaman at a press briefing in capital New Delhi Sitharaman asserted the relief package includes direct benefit cash transfers grains and pulses for the poor while the middle class would be able to withdraw funds from their employees provident fund account so the package that we come up with will benefit those migrant workers those poor those urban and rural poor and the women and this prime minister garib kalyan scheme that we want to come out with is expected to meet a total of 170000 crores thousands of migrant workers in india are struggling to survive the lockdown period as now rendered jobless the 21 day nationwide lockdown that began on wednesday was announced by prime minister narendra modi as a measure to protect the country's 1.3 billion people from the fast spreading corona virus सब मेहनत मजदूरी करने वाले आदमी है रिक्शा भी बंद है फैक्ट्रियां भी बंद हो गई खाने पीने को कुछ है नहीं है क्या करेंगे फिर 20 दिन का और बढ़ा दिया आगे सब सरकार ने सस्पेंशन ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट सर्विसेज इन द कंट्री हैव आल्सो एडेड टू देयर सफरिंग्स एज दे आर फोर्स टू वॉक हंड्रेड्स ऑफ माइल्स टू रीच बैक होम वेल दैट्स द वे इट वाज इन साउथ एशिया दिस इवनिंग बिफोर वी कंक्लूड द टॉप स्टोरीज वंस अगेन Total COVID-19 cases reached 649 in India amid lockdown 13 dead. Prisoner released by Afghan government to start by March end says Taliban. And Sri Lanka updates curfew time amid COVID-19 spread. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.